the late 1920s, after graduation from the command and general staff school, Major Dwight D. Eisenhower was assigned to France to prepare a guidebook on American battlefields in Europe. It was his first direct experience with that continent. With the 30s came other assignments, climaxed by service under General Douglas MacArthur in the Philippines. For four years, he worked with MacArthur, who was commander-in-chief of the Philippine Army, to help the Commonwealth government work out a plan for its military defense. Ordered back to the States in December 1939, Lieutenant Colonel Eisenhower went to Fort Lewis, Washington, as executive officer of the 15th Infantry Regiment. In the dark spring of 1940, German armored divisions were crashing through Holland and Belgium. The Luftwaffe was streaking its destruction through Europe's skies. France was prostrate, and beleaguered Britain was standing alone. The United States had passed the Selective Service Act to prepare for what inevitably lay ahead. And the biggest challenge in Colonel Eisenhower's life was to aid in that preparation. Late in 1940, he was made Chief of Staff of the 3rd Division, where his staff work brought him assignment as Chief of Staff of the 9th Corps. In the summer of 1941, Colonel Eisenhower became Chief of Staff to General Walter Kruger, whose newly organized 3rd Army was preparing to participate in the most realistic war maneuvers yet held by American troops. In these maneuvers over the Louisiana countryside, as America fought for the time to train its growing army of citizen soldiers, Eisenhower's task was to work out a plan of defense against an invading mechanized force. Soon after the maneuvers were over, Eisenhower was promoted to Brigadier General, and within a matter of days came the bombing of Pearl Harbor. From almost this moment on, the fate of the nation and the fate of General Dwight D. Eisenhower would be inextricably bound together.